The Budokwai is the oldest martial arts club in Europe. Founded in 1918 by Gunji Koizumi for the practice of the Japanese martial arts, the club celebrated its 70th anniversary on November the 27th, 1988 at the Royal Albert Hall in London with a major international judo and karate tournament. Up until the 50th anniversary in 1968, the club had staged such displays annually, but this was the first for 20 years. These are the youngest members of the club, opening the show under the watchful eye of their instructor, Steve Gadd. Many juniors that have trained at the club have gone on to represent Britain in international competition at senior level. Senior judo at the Budokwai has always been of the highest caliber. Most of Britain's greatest judo players have honed their skills at the club. Champions and instructors of the past have included Yuki Otani, the club's first instructor, the greatly respected Trevor Leggett, Jeff Gleason, the first man to captain Britain to victory in the European Judo Championships, Charles Palmer, later to become chairman of the British Olympic Association, and the great Japanese champions Saburo Matsushita and Kisabura Watanabe. Here are the current members of the Budokwai's senior judo section displaying their throwing skills. The players throwing are John Dobson and nearest to the camera, Steve Gann. Throws to the front are followed by this well-known abandonment throw to Moinagi. A spectacular rare counter throw of Yurinagi concludes this section. Being able to fly through the air and land safely is important to the judo player. Here, the seniors demonstrate precision, timing, and spatial awareness in their varied breakthrough display. In the center here is the current senior judo instructor to the club, Peter Blewett. Other recent instructors include British Olympians Sid Haw and Tony Sweeney, the Japanese world lightweight champion, Katsuhiko Kashiwazaki, the legendary Yashiro Yamashita, and Britain's own world champion, Neil Adams, who appears later in the show. Gymnastic ability is of great advantage to judo players. They're encouraged to practice regularly. Here, Peter Blewett holds a naked katanya with a Japanese longsword for some rather more risky dive rolls. The high diver is Ben Soames. <laughs> Following high dive rolls, the seniors concluded their display by showing how far they could dive roll. And so did this judo player. Here we have Jane Bridge, Britain's first ever world champion, men or woman, who won her title in 1980 in New York. Jane Bridge. demonstrating the throws with which she won this world title. 
begin this marvellous run of success that Britain has enjoyed right up to the Olympic Games only two months ago. Now using Siotoshi. Shoulder. That was Sodi Surikonegoshi, one of the most destructive of the techniques. Jane was world champion at under 48 kilograms and has always been regarded as one of the world's most stylish female fighters. We now move on to Sharon Rand. Sharon from Grimsby was a gold medalist in the featherweight class in the Seoul Olympic Games when she competed in the demonstration event. Sport will be part of the full Olympic program in Barcelona in 1992. Here is Sharon using the same technique in international competition. And this is the devastating Tegaruma that won her the 1988 British Open Championships in England. Next, Loretta Doyle, the world featherweight champion in 1982. Enormously successful competitor for many years. She was also European champion in 1983. Upon CNR, shoulder throw. Straight into Juji Katani, straight on. Anne Hughes, the world life champion. Yoko Wakari. Goshi, major hit throw. Marotti Sianagi, straight into an arm lock, and the lock goes onto the elbow there, and our uh, opponent has to submit, and the elbow being dislocated. There it goes again. Yoko Wakari is a throw rarely seen in top competition, but Anne has developed it as one of her strongest techniques. Here she is scoring with it in the British Open. Next, Diane Bell. Another gold medal winner at Seoul this year. She's also the reigning world champion. Light middle weight. Probably scooping action now with Uchigari. And then side sacrifice to beat Tanya Toshi. Uchimata, her high throw demonstrated slowly. And that's it. There you are, Diane Bell. And here to demonstrate are Tony McCarthy, Ian Stockford, Stephen Crawley, Christopher Holdsworth, and Graham Mullins.
These juniors are all members of the Liverpool Red Triangle Karate Club, one of the strongest Shotokan clubs in the country. In the centre is Tony McCarthy, who is 11 years old and a first down. Excellent cutter were Stephen Crawley, aged 12, and a second down, Ian Stockforth, a 14 year old first down, Chris Walforth, aged 12, and a first cue, and Graham Mullen, a 14 year old second cue. This display really was appreciated by the crowd of the Albert Hall. The next item on the programme was a full judo international between Great Britain and West Germany. Your judo commentator at the Albert Hall is Jerry Hicks. This is a seven-man team contest in weight category, fighting from heavyweight to lightweight. Britain's heavyweight is Elvis Gordon from Wolverhampton. He's the current European champion and also world silver medalist. His opponent is Joachim Platt, 1987 world and European bronze medalist. Elvis has got a quick knockdown. No, he's got no score, but he's not letting his man go. He's working for a strangle. Yes, he's got his bottom hand in. He's working to get the top hand in. It could come on any moment. No, no, the German's getting to his feet. Elvis has brought him down again. He's got a leg over his head. The German's fighting free. Still fighting for grips. No score yet to either. The German attacks. That's a score for Gordon. Right on the edge of the contest area, a German attack with a Makikomi, but Gordon pulled off a rear counter, spun him out, managed to stay inside the contest area himself until the German had landed, and that's a Yuko. The German's working hard now, try and make up the score. Gordon is still ahead. The German attacks with he's a groomer. And another quick fake for Ochigari. And right on the contest edge, Gordon is working hard to get control of the far side, and he drops under and scores with Marotti Sienaghi, again right on the edge of the contest area. Pops in tightly under him, takes him over the top, remains inside himself, and again it's enough to take him onto his side and score another Yuko. That's a win for Gordon, 1-0 to Great Britain. <laughs> Nick Cockatello from Manchester, fighting the sole Olympic silver medalist, Mark Meeling. Nick will do very well to hold this man to a draw. He's one of the world's outstanding judo players. Straight away, he's brought him a very clever combination, taking him to the ground. He's turned Nick onto his back, and he's now working to entangle his arm in his jacket, getting control of the arm and working for a holding. Nick looks as though he's in real trouble here. Mealy knows exactly what he's up to, but Nick's fighting hard. Now look again at the Kochi Kosoda combination that took Nick to the ground. Meeling is straight onto his back. Nick's off his back. He's got control of the leg and he's out of the holding. That's a surprise. I would expect Nick to have been held there. Meeling must be surprised too. He's working hard now. Meeling is working hard for the attack. Oh, Nick's come to the attack again. He's taken, taken Meeling down. The coach Igari and he's straight on his back in Neil Adams style. He's working to roll him onto his back and then pull the arm out straight for the arm. He's got him onto his back and he's got the arm out straight. Meeling must submit. He's holding out. No, oh, he's tapped, that's it! That's a great victory for Nick Cockatello. Now let's see it again. He's on his back, he rolled him out, he got the arm out straight immediately, 
And now he's going to lift his hips to put that extra pressure on the elbow joint and that's what brings the submission. And Nick's always a good team player but that must be the win of his life. 2-0 to Great Britain. Ray Stevens is from the Budokai. He's the current Commonwealth champion and he's fighting Stefan Freudenberg. Ray is a very elegant player. He can throw on both sides and he's fighting now to control the right sleeve. He can throw left and right from there. And he's come in for a sorry silly komigoshi, but the Germans killed it. Watch it again. Ray spins across, but the German gets his leg round and takes them both to the ground. Now Ray's fighting for the same grip. And he's got it again. He's got control of the sleeve. And he spins through with much more commitment that time and gets a wonderful score. Now watch it in slow motion. Sorry, Suri Komigoshi. Hips right through and the sort of throw that judo men dream of. Puts him almost onto his back. But watch Freudenberg getting the left hand free, which just saves the throw. He manages to get just onto his side and so it's not quite a full score. Wazari, but that's a good score to be going on with. Freudenberg's got to work very hard now. Fighting to get control of Ray's head. Ray's fighting him off. Freudenberg tries a small attack at the leg and then tries Kouchi, pulling his head down, goes for a leg grab, but Ray counters with Uchimata, gets onto his back and starts working for the arm lock. No, they're still fighting for grips. Freudenberg's got the inside hold, Ray fights it off, controls the head, Freudenberg reaches over for the belt, Ray's on his knees, he takes him down, Freudenberg's after the holding, he's got the control of the head, he's after Kesekatami. Ray fights it out, he's got his head out. He's got his head, he's somersaulted out of the hole, Freudenberg's knocking the up, he's after the arm lock. Ray's got rid of him and he's on his feet. That's a good win for Ray Stevens with a very fine Wesari throw. Paul Ajana, another Budokai player, fighting and Jork Arp. A lot of weight on Arp now. If he loses this contest, the team loses. Ajana's got control of the right side. He's trying to fight his right arm free. He's in for a good attack, but the German rides it. Watch it again. Ajala comes in for a strong hip on Suyanagi. The German gets off the throw, and lands on his knee, saves the score. And that's it, a draw. Britain still 3 0 ahead. Colin Savage, the third Budokai player in this Great Britain team. He's fighting Carsten Beckenbach. Colin needs a win, to win and he's got a score. He's taken Beckenbach down with a Ochigari. Watch it again. Inner side leg throw, full weight commitment, and he takes him down for a five-point score. That could be the critical score. Despite the three-point penalty for passivity, five points wins the contest and the match for Great Britain. Mark Adshead from Kendall represented Great Britain at the Seoul Olympics. He's fighting Gerald Freitag. Mark scores with Koichi Mekikomi. He's hurt the German. He's turning in for the holding. The referee stops it. Watch it in slow motion. Takes him down. You can see the German's hurt. His leg caught in the mats. The German's able to continue. Mark's looking for the same hold again. Got control of the left side. And he goes after the same throw. And I think it's the same injury again. We'll see that in slow motion. Uh, there, that's the point where the leg gets trapped. And you can see the German is very badly hurt this time. The German's had to retire. And that's a 10-point win for Mark Adford. 5-0 to Great Britain. Carl Finney is also from Kendall. Fighting Helmut Dykes. Team results already settled, but these two are fighting it out hell for leather. Oh, a nice attack from Carl there. Sasai Shurukomi actually, but Helmut's twisted out. Fighting for grips. Each trying to get the best hold, putting in a lot of small attacks. Not getting any score. A bit of a scramble, they go to the ground. Carl's underneath. No, Helmet doesn't want to fight him. Standing up. And that's a draw. And the final score is a 5 0 victory for Great Britain over the West Germany. That excellent victory by Great Britain was followed by a historical item. 
George Kerr, 7th Dan, and Roger Bronowski, 2nd Dan, performed the Budokwai Kimono Kata. This demonstration of self-defense is a series of predetermined moves we call Kata. It was devised by Kunji Koizumi, we should call him GK. Now the demonstrator in the red and white belt is George Kerr, who was a great judo competitor himself. Here he's attacking with a knife, because GK wanted to try and demonstrate that self-defense could be applied to what was then a sort of contemporary situation. Attacks with weapons from various directions, from the front, from the rear. You'll see the um, attack and defense is alternating between the two demonstrators. There, George is using something looking very like a contemporary judo throw. But it's a response to an attack. Here, the response is an arm lock, which brings submission from the attacker. The parry to the blow finished with a wrist lock, which actually threw the man to the ground. When George was in competition, he was three times European silver medalist. Now here he's attacking with a weapon, which could have been a stick or a club. Not only is he thrown, but he's disarmed, the weapon cast aside. An indication that the man could be finished off with a kick or a blow. fairly ruthless way of getting rid of the attacker on that occasion. George is also a very distinguished coach. He coached the Austrian champion Seisenbecker, who I think is probably the only judo player to win two Olympic gold medals. He's also now coaching Loretta Doyle, who you saw earlier in the programme. The feeling for a pliable response produces just the sort of throws you see demonstrated earlier. These big abandonment throws are very much part of contemporary judo competition. They were great favourites of GK, who well, I'm sure would have been delighted to see this very impressive show tonight. A very skillful demonstration and a very nostalgic reminder of the old Budokai shows. Let's just look again at this basic principle of Jew, the Jew of Judah. Following that exciting display of unarmed combat by the Royal Marines, Bob Poynton, 5th Dan of the Liverpool Red Triangle Club, demonstrated wood-breaking techniques.
This skill is the result of painstaking practice and total concentration of the body's energy, or ki, into each strike. The height achieved by this kick is exceptional. The second international of the evening was a karate team match between Great Britain and Spain. Your karate commentator at the Albert Hall is Peter Godwin. The British team wearing red belts tonight are just back from their success in Paris at the European Championships where they took first place. The Spanish team have got some of their top fighters missing owing to injuries sustained in that event. The first fight tonight is between Ronnie Christopher and Miguel Munoz. And Ronnie Christopher goes straight in to the attack and scores with the Yakuziki. That's score for Ronnie Christopher, I think. Rosario, half point. And back to the fight. And Spanish's got to do something now. And he's moving in. And Ronnie Christopher scores again with another Yakusuki. Well, let's have a look at that. There's an Ashuri that misses. It's a kick to the head. And the Spaniard keeps coming in. And there's a faked Morshigari roundhouse kick. And a Yakusuki to the body. A reverse punch to the body by Ronnie Christopher. No score. Well, I suppose it didn't have enough focus. We couldn't really see from this angle. Oh, they're both straight in there and looked to me like Ronnie Christopher connected with a punch to the body. Yes, another Wazari giving him Epong and the first contest to Great Britain. Second fight is between George Best and the Spanish champion Juan Munoz. And uh, they're shaping up now and George Best faking Faking, looking quite aggressive here, moves in, nothing happening yet, keeps changing his stance, and he's looking for an opening, and he, Ashibarai, kick to the head, another kick to the head, lots of kicks flying there, let's see which scored. I think it was the, yes, there's an Ashibarai sweeping him away, another kick roundhouse to the back of the head, that doesn't score, not enough focus, then the Spaniard tries to retaliate, doesn't, doesn't connect, uh, a punch from George Best that doesn't connect, another kick to the back of the head, and then he comes inside with an Ushiri Mawash, that's an inside roundhouse kick which scores Wazari, half a point, and George Best ahead. Well, the Spanish champion is going to have to come up with something now, let's see what he can do. And he's looking for an opening and a half-hearted back kick, that won't get him very far. He'll have to do better than that. And he's going in, and yes! Well, let's have a look at that. He blocks the kick, and George Best goes right into the body with a chew down punch and let's see how that scores. Wazari, two Wazaris, scores Ukon and another win for Great Britain. And we have Miles Draper against Juan Moya. And they're both still looking for a score. Miles Draper goes in there with a kick that doesn't connect and a punch that also doesn't connect. But he's, uh, what was that, looked like a punch from the Spaniard but I think it was outside the area. Let's see how they score that. Yes, it was out of the area, so still no score. And we're into the last few seconds of this fight now. Somebody's going to have to do something. And there's the bell. Since I know it will call for a decision, hand tie, by the judges. Let's see how they score it. Yep, crossed flags a up draw. in the air. That means a draw. Picky wacky. So Great Britain still two fights ahead. Now we have Jimmy Brennan versus David Cano of Spain. Jimmy Brennan's a fourth Dan, and David Cano, it, although the former junior champion of Spain, is only a brown belt. Oh, right in there with a Yakuzuki Jodan to the head. Let's have a look at that. Right to the head. Beautiful punch, and he's got Wazari, half a point. So Jimmy Brennan ahead. The Spaniard's going to have to do something. He's looking a little intimidated. He's not, ah! No, that missed. Um, he looks a little outclassed, actually, the Spaniard here. I actually right, but Jimmy Brennan doesn't follow through with any scoring technique. So, no score. Jimmy Brennan's still half a point ahead. And still the Spaniard just standing there. He's not really looking like he's got the confidence to move in on Jimmy Brennan. Uh, Jimmy Brennan keeps fainting. And a beautiful Yakuziki to the head. Let's have a look at that. A great reverse Jodan punch. And that's Chewy. That means that's a penalty for lack of control. 
But Jimmy Brennan, ah, oh, there's the bell. So let's have the judge's decision. I think he's going to win it. He had a Wazari. But he also had a penalty. Yes, Jimmy Brennan wins. Another win for Great Britain. The last fight is between Elwyn Hall and Jose Garcia, the last fight of this contest. And uh, looking for Evan Spanner goes straight into the attack, but doesn't score. And they clash there, and there's a punch to the head by Elwyn Hall. Let's just have a look at that. They clash there, and it's a Zuki punch to the head. In fact, it's a Kazama Zuki. He's got his leg forward there, and the Spaniard goes down. That was quite a hard punch. Yes, he gets a warning. Another of those, and he'll be disqualified. Well, they're both still looking for a point, and the Spaniard's going to have to do something now. And in goes Elwin Hall with a kick to the head. Let's just have a look at that. Well, it's a nice kick, and it connects, but I don't know if it's got enough focus. No, no score. So, still looking for a score. And Elwin Hall looking to finish this. And he goes straight in, beautiful as you like, and a punch to the body. That's got to be a new point. Let's have a look at that. And he sweeps him away. The Spaniard comes crashing down. And he follows straight through with a punch to the body and uh, another punch to the head. Well, that's just for good measure. Ippon, that's four wins and the match to Great Britain. Now, in the rematch, we have first fight between Ronnie Christopher and Juan Moya. And Ronnie fainting there. And a kick to the head, but he misses and sweep. Uh, the Spaniard thinks he scored there. But I think Ronnie Christopher was quicker with his punch to the head. Yes, it's Rosari for Ronnie Christopher putting in half a point ahead. And uh, this contest seems to be going the, the same way as the first. So the Spaniard's going to have to do something. He's not doing a lot. One more year of Spain there. Changing stance and looking for an opening and an equalizing point. Ah, yes. And Ronnie Christopher gets him with the same technique. A Jodan punch. So that's two Rosaris, Ippon, here's the punch, 1-0 to Great Britain. Gary Harford in his first fight now against Jose Garcia. And they're both sizing each other up, playing a bit of a waiting game. Both very wary of each other and uh, looking for openings, but nobody's prepared to make the first move. And there's the Spaniard, and he goes straight in. Yes, he's made the first attack. And I think he scored. Yes, I think that was a punch to the head. Rosario, half point. Well, Gary's going to have to do something now to equalise. And the Spaniard attacks, and Gary grabs him, and yes, I think he's equalised there with a punch to the body. But no, the referee uh, doesn't seem to think so. No score. Well, Gary's still looking for an equaliser, and he attacks, but... And the Spaniard attacks. Nobody's actually connecting here, but they're both pretty aggressive. And... Everybody's egging Gary on now. He's looking for that equaliser. And yes, he's got it. A Yakuzuki to the body. And that's going to be... Wazari, yes. A half point. Not quite enough focus to give him Ippon. So that's one Wazari each. And that's the end of the contest. So that's a draw. Well, at least the Spanish actually scored a point there. For the first time. Now Randy Williams takes on... David Carno. Let's see if he can do any better against Williams than he did against Jimmy Brennan. And they're both throwing a few techniques, but um, nothing too dynamic at the moment. They're just sizing each other up, and uh, well, the Spanish boy still looks a little intimidated. Randy moves in, and a punch to the head. That's a Yakuzuki to the head. And let's see how they score that. No score. Well, it looked good from here. I guess it didn't reach or connect with enough power to satisfy the judges. So Randy Williams still looking to um, score a point here. And that's a good punch. Williams blocks Kano's punch and there's a Yakuzuki to the body. That's Wazari, half a point. Randy Williams ahead. So it's time for David Kano to pull something out of the bag. Um, well, he's adjusting his trousers there. I don't think that's going to get him very far. And a punch to the head from Randy Williams. Straight in to the head. It's another Wazari making Ippon and yet another win for Great Britain. Now Elwin Hall.
takes on Miguel Munoz. Elwin, a great aggressive fighter. Ashi Barai and straight in there. What a great technique. He sweeps him off his feet, follows him down, punches to the body, and again to the head. That's going to have to be an Ippon. Ippon! Beautiful win there for Elwin Hall. And the last fight tonight is between George Best and Juan Munoz who fought earlier this evening. Let's see if Juan Munoz can do any better this time. And George goes in, Ashi Barai, and a kick to the head. That was a Joe Nishiro Mawashi. Let's see how they score it. Rosari, half point. Well, he comes in with a roundhouse kick there that's a feint, and then a sweep, and he tries a punch to the head that doesn't quite connect, and let's see what happens now. Yes, you can just see the kick coming right up and to the head of beautiful Shiro Mawashi. Keep going forward, George. Keep going forward. And Go on, George looking to finish off the Spaniard now. And he attacks with a sweep on, and George. he's a little late with the uh, punch there. No score. Keep yourself sharp, George. But he's definitely on top of this fight. Attacks the body. Ashi Barai and a kick of beautiful Jodan Shiro Mawashi. Let's just watch that. He sweeps him up and... This is the same technique that got him the point against the same man in the first fight. This really is a beautiful combination. Yes, and it's Ipon, four wins, and the match yet again to Great Britain. Neil Adams. I know a lot of people have been waiting to see Neil at his first public appearance since the Olympics. Working with Neil tonight, Chris Bowles. This is two judo men who really enjoy the fluid, exciting movement of judo is most skillful. Here's Neil's famous arm lock, which won him the World Championships. I think you really need slow motion to appreciate the enormous dynamic control which enables Neil to exploit the ebb and flow of movement, which really transcends sheer technique. Poetry of movement may be a bit of a cliché, but Neil certainly got it.
Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Adams versus Chris Bowles. No doubt that the audience appreciate they've seen something very special to me. I think you need the slow motion to see the extraordinary skill in this incredible entry for Juju Gatami. A lot of people get there from the ground, very few in mid-air. And again, look at the athletic and gymnastic skill in these brilliant evasions. And the tremendous impetus of that throw which takes them both off the ground. A quite brilliant demonstration. Neil Adams and Chris Bowles. The man with the unenviable task of following that display was none other than Brian Jacks. Brian Jacks is going to demonstrate left and right. Those sotos are going to make sure how to reach the throw first slowly, then at first. Brian Jacks' remarkable contest career owed much to his extraordinary skill to attack both left and right with equal facility. And you'll notice without even changing his grip. the ability to explode into the throw in a way which is very similar to Neil Adams. Notice how in these big front throws he can make his entry with one jump. Watch that again on the other side. One jump enables him to held his opponent into the air, almost like a mini explosion. You'll get the full dynamic effect when you see it now. Ordinary speed. Brian just building up a little head of steam, and away he goes.
left, and then right, slow, and then finally fast. This is a smart one, Takes more than the elder four to intimidate Brian Jack. Yeah! Yeah! And away with another big, explosive throw. Watch it in slow motion. One great jump in, both feet off the ground, and then... I'll sort him out afterwards, don't worry. A great driving sweep. Notice how he drives his men backwards before he does the front throw. <laughs> Brian Jacks was followed by one of the greatest judo players of all time, Angelo Parisi, the winner of more Olympic judo medals than anyone in history. Angelo started his judo career as a London schoolboy and trained at the Budokai and owes a great deal to Brian Jackson. Like Brian, he can throw with equal facility on left and right. And here he is demonstrating one of his most successful competitive skills, Siyoi Otoshi. Although he's a big man, he has extraordinary explosive power. And when he scoops them up for this enormous rear counter, he can put away the biggest players in the world. I think we must see his fabulous Uranagi again in slow motion. He takes them up, turns and twists puts them on the back in no uncertain manner. The height he gets with the lift in that Tegaruma counter is really quite phenomenal. Another world famous judo player has started at the Budokan. Union of Great Britain, Kanazuki Inoida. Kanazuki Inoida was All Japan champion in 1963, and he came to Britain in 1965, becoming the chief instructor to the Karate Union of Great Britain after it was founded in 1966, which was when he last performed at the Royal Albert Hall. Sensei Onoida's kata is based on his own experience as a fighter and a teacher. All of the moves are performed at a ceremonial pace rather than as in combat to emphasize the power and control of the sensei. The moves represent blocks, strikes, and kicks against several imaginary opponents coming at the sensei from different directions. Here, for example, he 
grabs the opponent's arm, pulls it down, strikes to the groin, double punch to finish the attacker off. Then he turns straight away to face another opponent and uses a similar technique in the other direction. As in all kata, Sensei Inoida's kata is full of symmetry. sword attack. In Kata, defences are made against attacks by weapons as well as punches and kicks. And that's the final Kiai to finish a beautiful demonstration by Sensei. In order. The final item was a traditional one against ten competition, giving Angelo Parisi the chance to display his outstanding skill. Larry Stevenson, member of the British squad, is the first out. He rode the first attack, but not that one. <laughs> Next out is Nick Collins. And he goes to right Kayatoshi. Dino Armagen. Jack Williams. Angelo committing a little bit more weight that time. Steve Gadd. A little skip. And away he goes. John Dobson. And John tries an attack. Dean Pitcher. Tony Smith. Little darts from Angelo that time. Kevin Grundon. Only Wazari called. And there's the Euronagy. No doubt about that one. And lastly, Dave Southby. Well, David tipped him over. And he's chasing him on the ground. What audacity. Angelo doesn't seem to be very troubled by the attack. Dave's going for an arm lock. Angelo holding it off with quite an ingenious defence. Dave put away very decisively with left high pressure. Well, Angelo has been out of competition for five years, but his astonishing throwing skills seem quite undiminished. And that was the 70th anniversary show of the Budokwai from the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs>